Hey Indos, Michael Passage here at Passage Automotive. I'm leaving my office now and I'm going to West LA. I'm going to Simpang Asia. I'm gonna meet up with the beautiful, lovely Miss Wendy Bot. That's right. She's gonna meet up with me and tell about her life in the Netherlands and how she moved from the Netherlands all the way here to LA, SoCal. So let's go guys. No matter where you drive in LA, whether it's morning, daytime, afternoon, daytime, or in the evening, or at night, there's always traffic. Right now, I'm heading west on the 10 and traffic. One, two, three, four lanes, traffic. So here we are. This is Motor National, and parking here is always a biatch as you can see people if you ever want to open a restaurant make sure you have parking space because uh -uh, it's not gonna work if you don't have parking it is really a nightmare Simpang Asia Where is Wendy? There she is! Usually I'm on time, but now she is here before me. Hello, 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 hello! This is Wendy! Hi! So, okay, so my favorite thing is uh, Garu Garu. Yeah. Can I get extra peanut sauce? Sure. And then does it come with a cool book? It does. It comes with camping and shrimp chips. The big one is, which one is that? Shrimp chips. Shrimp chips. Can I have that please? Yeah. And then um, I think that's it. So it comes with both. Do you want to do both or just one? I prefer just the other one. The yellow one is empty. Wait, you said it again? The yellow one is empty. Okay, no, I just want the shrimp ones. Only the shrimp ones. Only the shrimp ones, right? yeah. yeah. So this is it, right? Oh my god, this is my favorite dish. My favorite dish. My dad used to make this too. Garu garu, lots of extra peanut sauce, kupuk, eggs. I'm in heaven. So this is, uh, this is exciting for me. And I miss that. I miss um, being in Holland and having my dad cook. It's one of the things I always, you know, did. I sat in the kitchen and just watched him, you know, cut all the vegetables, and stir fries, and Indonesian sambal, all that stuff. So it's nice that we have a place here in LA where you know we get to eat. So tell the viewers, where are we now? Where, where am I? Yeah. I'm at Simpang Asia in, uh, where are we, in Culver City? Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. just, it's so good. And every time my parents come here, we go here because it's authentic. So Wendy, tell me something about yourself. Where were you born? Mm -hmm. I was born in, uh, in Vught and my mom is Dutch. My dad is, was born in Indonesia, but he's Indonesian and has a little bit Indian in him as well. And um, yeah. You have sisters? I have two sisters. I have a younger one. I have an older one. They actually both live here. So one lives in Texas, one lives in New Jersey. So you got two sisters, one in New Jersey, one in Texas. Texas. What about yourself? What made you come over here? Um, I came over here because my aunt had submitted a picture without me knowing to Linda the Mall. It was a uh, uh, modeling competition online and a national modeling competition. And I became second, I think I was 15 or 16. And one of my first jobs was in Miami. And I remember going there and loving it so much. So after that, I had a few other jobs in a few uh, different places like Tunisia. And I said to my parents, I, I, I want to become a model. I, I don't want to be in school anymore. So I moved to Miami when I was 15. So 15, 16 years old. Yeah, I was 16. I think my mom was like, you were 17. I was 16, what I remember. Yeah, I moved to Miami by myself. Which... So your parents didn't uh, accompany you by yourself? No, I went by myself. I think maybe in the beginning they went with me um, for a little bit, but you know, they, they, they couldn't really stay there. So no, I went by myself. And I think about it now, because I have a daughter too, that's 17. I was like, wow, would I be okay with that? Just, you know, for her to go to a different country? The answer is not really. 
but and I'm happy my parents allowed me to do that. And then your sisters followed you? Then my sisters followed me. My older sister came um, to LA because I ended up from Miami. I went to New York and New York to LA. And then once I was in LA, my sister also came. And she lived here for a little while. You remember the first agency in the Netherlands and then the first agency in the US that signed you? I actually don't think I had one in Holland, no? I wonder say, didn't I? I had one in, in uh, here called Bordeaux Models in Miami. No, not Bordeaux Models. No, Models International. Models International in Miami was owned by um, a Dutch person, Conrad. Conrad Baker. Oh my God, I can't believe I remember. I still remember that. Baker or Bakker? Bakker. Yeah. Yeah, Bakker. Conrad Bakker. And um, he was, you know, he said to my parents, he kind of was taking care of me, you know, keeping an eye on me because I was so young. And um, yeah, that was my first agency. I don't remember I had one in Holland now that I think about it. And then New York? And then I ended up in New York. I followed this guy that I really liked. He was a model photographer and he had a place in New York. And I was like, oh, let me explore that market. So I went to New York, had an agency there, and I lived there for maybe with him. Um, I don't know, maybe six, eight months. And then his parents lived in Los Angeles. And then he wanted to go back to LA. So I came with him, lived with him for a little while. And then, um, yeah, I mean, that was it. I never, never looked back. Still in LA. Which model agency was it in LA? You remember that one? There's so many. I so many, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember. I was with the leads, Wilhelmina. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't really remember. Perfect. Wendy, share with us, what was your most memorable experience throughout your modeling career? It was actually one of the first jobs I did. I was still in Holland and um, this Dutch photographer uh, took this whole team to in, uh, Tunisia. And I don't remember the company that we modeled for. And um, he was in a Jeep and I was on a um, Arabian horse. And he said, just go as fast as you want. Bear, you know, no, no, uh, no saddle, no anything. And, um, and that was, I was in heaven because I, as a young kid, I loved riding horses. So for me, in the middle of nowhere, in the desert, and just, you know, no end inside, just go as fast as you could. So um, I did, I, it was, I don't know, I still remember it to this day. I remember the owner of the horse was very upset because by the time we got, we ended the shoot, the horse was dripping with sweat. Um, but I still have that picture just, yeah, I don't know. There was something about that experience was, was it for a um, perfume brand, clothing brand? No, clothing company. I just can't remember what clothing company it was. Yeah. That is your thing. I just showed a picture from you and Anna Nicole Smith, of course. Mm -hmm. I, know, yeah. I know Anna Nicole because of the guests and I was, I'm was, i still fond of wearing guest jeans. But how did you get involved with this? I would like to know, not me. Everybody would like to know that. Um, I mean, my agency um, said that, you know, she was already doing yes, right? But this was going to be more of in a setting where there was going to be two guys. It was her and, um, I forgot his name, uh, Byron Allen, I think his name is. No, I forgot his name. Um, but anyway, we were doing a scene where both guys were boxers and she was rooting for one boxer, I was rooting for another boxer. And we kind of did the campaign like that. So it was uh, it was fun. We did miniature bo a miniature golf scene. We did a restaurant scene. Um, we got to, you know, we got to work with each other for quite a few days. So it was fun. Yeah. And then the other one, my favorite, favorite. my favorite, <clears throat> guys, look at this. This, if you're a car guy like me, and like Wendy, of course, this is, oh my God. Yeah, and that's his car, and that's his helicopter. So that's an Audi, that's a, that's, yeah, that's an Audi. It's an Audi. Yeah. I don't even know what kind of Audi So, yeah. tell me more about, I think, tell me more. I'm not gonna say, but you know who he is. So, um, that was shot in San Paolo. And um, we were shooting it at the airport because of the helicopter that was there and we put his car there. And um, he was very shy. And I actually had no idea who he was. They were telling me who he was, but at that time I had no idea. Now, of course, I, you know, I, I, ch I cherish that picture, obviously. But at the time I didn't know. Um, I was so young, maybe I was 18, 19, I think, probably. And um, there was a female photographer and he said to her, listen, because back then, you know, nothing was digital. We were working with, with rolls, right? A roll of film. 35 millimeter, yeah. Exactly. And he said, um, only one roll. And, you know, as a photographer, you, you know, like, are you kidding me? One roll? That's all I get for a magazine spread? And he said, one roll and that's it. So, he, you know, she was shooting. And uh, when, once the roll was over with, um, she put another roll in. And he was complaining and he said, you know, I said one roll. She goes, no, 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 just really quick. And uh, he grabbed my hand 
He took me into the helicopter, closed it behind, and we took off. And we landed back at his house. And I was laughing because, I mean, what was I going to do, right? And yeah. right there, we left the makeup artist, we left the stylist, we left the photographer, we left basically the whole crew. And um, we took off, and I remember saying to him, do you have your, you know, your pilot license? I think he didn't have it at the time. I want to say he had a learning pilot. I, I don't remember, but I just remember it was... Uh, it was exciting, and then we flew to his house, and then later on um, the crew and figured out that that's where we were, and uh, we laughed at it. And then I, I think an hour later, got on the, you know, uh, in the car and went back to LA. So it was a very, very quick trip. But so now tell the viewers who was that person? Oh, Artun Senna. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know that you didn't say that yet. No. Oh, yeah, it was Artem Senna. So, of course, now you know, I know um, who, that wa who that is or who that was. But back in the day, I really had no idea the significance of, of what that shoot was. So. Tell me more about your passion, hobbies. So my passion and hobbies are um, motocross, obviously. I just got my street license, so I can't wait to start, um, you know, getting into uh, getting some bikes, um, jumping out of airplanes, anything that has speed, like cars. I mean, I'm fascinated with cars like you are. Uh, I've gone to car races and, um, yeah, just anything outdoorsy. Driving cars, uh, automatic or stick shift? What do you prefer? I prefer I don't drive stick shift. Although I was once in Munich, I believe it was Munich, um, and I wanted to surprise my parents in Holland. So I didn't tell them anything. I just went to rent a car place and I rented a car and I asked if they had automatic. And they said, no, we only have a stick shift. And it had to be an Audi because my father is obsessed with Audis, always loved Audis. I'm like, let me get an Audi. It was a, an eight or something. Could have been. Um, and it was stick shift. I'm like, how am I going to figure this out? I have to figure this out. So. I got the car in like late afternoon and drove all night to the stick shift. I figure how hard can it be if I just go put in one gear and just take and just keep going. And that's what I did. That's the last time, the first time, the last time I've driven a stick. From Munich um, to Vught. From Munich to Vught. I believe it was from Munich to Vught. Yeah, it was amazing. So Wendy, you know about your modeling, you're still doing it, but what else besides modeling are you involved with? Um, yeah, so I still do modeling, but I, um, I also do Reiki. So Reiki is a form of energy healing. I started that originally on uh, people. And then I, my abilities of being a medium started coming in and I started hearing things. So I, in, you know, while I was doing Reiki, I woke up my clients, you know, this is resonate with you. This is what I'm getting. That's what I'm getting. So my business kind of kept evolving. So now I do intuitive coaching and like a medium. So I communicate with the afterlife and, uh, and also with animals. Yeah. So, before you came to the US, so being a, a teenage girl out of a Dutch endo father and a Dutch mother, so you have two sides. You have weekends going to Opa and Oma who were Dutch from mom's mm -hmm. side, but also going to Opa and Oma from that side. So, what what's like? a typical going so, to a, a Blanda family and to an Indo family? Indo family, okay. Going to the Dutch families every Sunday, right? Um, to me, I didn't enjoy that much because. It wasn't inclusive. It was basically the adults sitting around smoking cigars, and you walk in, you just see like you couldn't see each other because of all the smoke and the cigars and the pipe, and um, and then the kids were just left to do whatever they wanted to do. So I never enjoyed it. The Indonesian, my Indonesian grandparents, my, I loved, loved, loved it. I loved it because of all the friends and the uncles and, and that they had, and it was very um, inclusive and the humor and the food and I mean I would sit in the kitchen with my you know watch my grandmother and grandfather prepare the food and we would talk and it was just it was very social and it was very um, it's fun I was always laughing so I actually miss that what do you remember they were cooking oh what is something that you still oh, yeah, craving yeah, for yeah, when yeah, yeah. you know what my grandma was doing um, she was making speckook know what that is right yeah oh explain God, the guys the, the people who are watching what is spec cook spec cook has all these different layers um it's, it's, a, it's, it's a uh it's sweet and what would you say it is like cinnamony yeah and, uh, nutmeg and 
was just, it's really, really good. But it, but it took a lot of work. And so my grandma used to always make them. And she started selling them because people were like, oh, can you make me one? Or can you make her one? Or I want to give it as a gift. And so she started asking me for money. But then I was helping her, like me, you know, sitting in the kitchen and yeah. helping her with it. And then my grandfather um, would package it. And then he would, with him and I would go and we would uh, deliver it. So every holiday, I always asked my parents if I could just stay with them. That's what we did. Me and my sister. Who is that? That is my daughter. She's 17 years old. Blonde. That's kind of my eye color. Um, or hers are a little bit more blue. Eye color is? Uh, hers is blue, mine's green. But yeah, it's just light. And uh, But her dad is blonde. So that's where she got her light coloring from a little bit. You know? How is she towards uh, being a child out of two different worlds? Okay, I mean. Of course, she has Indo in her. Uh, did she ever go to Holland? She went to Holland. We went to Holland two years ago, maybe. She loves. She actually loves it. She loves the simplicity of it. Usually, one of her favorite things are to bike. You know, use the Dutch bicycle and go and bike or walk. Or, um, yeah, being in nature, uh, which is different here. Even though you can be in nature here too, it's just it's just a different type of you know grounding lifestyle. So she loves doing that. She doesn't speak Dutch. Kind of my fault. Oh, the uh, next question. Did the yeah. purpose or did you um, raise her? You know, to be honest with you, I really don't speak Dutch that well. I don't know. I, I love. I mean, it's not like I don't speak it. My parents say I don't speak it very well anymore. But I. Um, yeah, I don't know. I never, I never really cared about teaching her that. You know, some people are not happy about that, like my parents. But she knows a few words, so. So I just got back from the Netherlands and I brought you this. So please tell the viewers what that is. Okay, Musan is an is a magazine um, in English um, for those Dutch Indos that want to know a little bit more about their heritage and. Uh, it's amazing. So to subscribe on it, um, you go to info at musan.com. And I'm telling you, it's uh, it's great. Especially me, who doesn't really speak <laughs> Dutch that well. Um, I love the English version. So, so Mandy, mm -hmm. uh, how can they find you? Where can they reach out to you? Okay, on Instagram would be uh, underscore Wendy Bolt underscore. So that's W E N D Y B O T H. Or my website, which is www.wendyboth.com. Perfect. Hey guys, thank you for watching another episode of Meet the So Called Indos. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit that button. Every time I'll post something new, you get the notification and leave a comment. I do respond. Thank you very much. See you next time to or at Meet the So Called Indos. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>